Today, I've built a roster that sees teams made up of individual NBA draft classes. I've tossed 27 teams onto our map, each represented by one of their key players with the goal of finding one draft class to rule them all. And I came up with a foolproof way of avoiding anybody yelling at me for choosing who's competing in today's video. As I use this article right here, which ranked the top 30 draft classes of all time, I'll link it down below if you want to read it. I thought it was a pretty good list. However, I did eliminate a few years because they just weren't deep enough to build a solid roster. So yes, there's going to be a few players, a few legends omitted here. Let me know which draft classes you think should have made this video, but for the most part, this is going to be fun and unpredictable, and I can't wait. We actually started with a low-key banger matchup. I considered the 93 draft class led by Penny Hardaway and Chris Webber to be a big underdog against a stacked 1987 class, but a late bucket off an O-board from Chris Webber over Admiral and Reggie Miller dribbling out of bounds gave 93 the dub. Two of our most shallow classes would meet next, the 1965 class out of Golden State led by Rick Barry and Billy Cunningham against the 1960 crew led by Big O, Jerry West, and not much else. And that lack of depth did kill the ladder. 43 point win for 1965. Wow. The wheel would then give us a 2001 versus 1982 matchup. 01 surprisingly strong and balanced. 82 much more top heavy, which apparently was the recipe for success. Another large blowout. Also for this video, the winning team will get to steal a player from their vanquished foe after every matchup. So David Robinson joins the 19 1993 class, Oscar Robertson, 1965, and Pau Gasol goes to 1982. And now that we've got our feet under us, we've seen a couple matchups. Let's get going. Let's start finding some of these banger draft classes. 2005, that's not bad. 2005, one of the most uh, point guard heavy draft classes, as you'll see in a second, which weighs the compass, sending them okay, Southeast. I'm going to say that's into the territory of one of the most center heavy, uh, center dominated draft classes. 2014, 05, the point guard class, like I just mentioned, Chris Paul, Darren Williams leading the way if they can find some balance there, might be all right. Andrew Bogut was the first overall pick that year. Marvin Williams way up there. Yeah, not ideal. Well, 2014, like I just said, the center draft because it's got Embiid, Jokic. Honestly, Jokic should be, hold on. I had to go ahead and make Jokic a 98 there. Just looked wrong for him to be below Embiid after this season. Yeah, they've got uh, some good talent here. They could really use a point guard should they find a W here. And they're gonna have to work for it in the clutch here. Embiid, Jokic, they're up too. Darren Williams going to work now for 2005. Back out to CP3. One of these dudes got to find a good look. Chris Paul, another force jumper over smart, but this time he's got it. Oh boy, Julius Randle operating the offense in the clutch. Knicks fans, I'm sorry, but I don't love that. He got his own rebound. Yeah, maybe let's just get the ball out of Julius. Is that Gary Harris out there? Oh, Julius, wide open look, and he makes me eat my words. That is a clutch shot. Just a two-point win, but it counts. Chris Paul is an insanely perfect addition to our center-heavy 2014 class, and I went ahead and made Jokic a power forward just so they hopefully play together in the clutch. And that's a real nice move for our 2014 class. Yep, they're going to be great. After the 2014 class took a nice chunk of America over, we'd be heading to Canada, the 1998 draft class, the compass sending them into New York territory. A really, really loaded, at least top heavy 1998 draft class. Dirk, Vince Carter, Paul Pierce, Richard Lewis, Mike Bibby. They've got everything covered here. While New York, aka 1985, is led by Carl Malone, Pat Ewing, Chris Mullen, Joe Dumars, Arvey, to sub Yo, these rosters are stacked. And fittingly, with loaded teams on both sides, you knew we'd have some epic battles as 1998 versus 1985 did not disappoint. It went right down to the wire. As we've got a two-point game under a minute left, 1998 is down. They've got the ball, though, and they've got Vince out there putting up a three. Oh, that was a great look. The Knicks are going... Who is that? Michael Adams on the step back from the mid post. That was clutch. Again, I was shocked at how loaded both these teams are. I knew 98 was. Is that... Oh, that's a charge on Vince. Nah, nah, they're done. They're done. Joe Dumars of all people carrying the 85 draft class. Okay, then. I could have sent Dirk to the 1985 draft class, but he felt a bit redundant, so Vince lives on. And tragically, Canada has fallen. New York Orange takes over. I'm not gonna lie, losing 1998, I'll say again, almost all these teams are super loaded, but 19... Oh my gosh, forget about 98. We got 96 arriving in this video. If you don't know why 1996, just from seeing that is exciting, well, hold on, just one second. And you will also be in the know as 1996 is going into 1982 territory. Remember, they've already won a game. Again, 1982 won a game in that quick intro montage I showed. They added Pau Gasol. They've got Dominique, James Worthy. But 1996, I placed them in Charlotte because they technically drafted Kobe Bryant. Also in that draft, Allen Iverson, Steve Nash, Ray Allen, Jermaine O'Neal, Biggs, and yo, this, this roster. I mean, obviously it's loaded. I knew it would be, and it is. Oh my gosh, it's not a blowout though. 
it is not a blowout. 96 went on a bit. Oh, there. Okay, there it is. There it is. There. <laughs> okay, I was kind of expecting a blowout. That was a bit too close for comfort, but 1996 does hold on. If you're really keen while watching these videos, you might see some positions and stuff being adjusted. I sometimes edit these rosters on the fly, so I just made Jermaine a center, James Worthy a power forward. It's never to give a team an advantage or disadvantage, just to add more balance to each roster. Anyways, who knows how far 96 will go? These videos can be unpredictable, but at least they didn't get uh, first game eliminated. We got a modern matchup next as the wheel gave us 2014 again, sending them Northwest, which I took to mean into Portland 2012 territory. I gave 2012 to Portland because of Dame Lillard, but they've also got Anthony Davis, Bradley Beal, Draymond, a lot of current day players. But remember Nikola Jokic, Joel Embiid, now a prime Chris Paul on their side. This is going to be tough for 2012 or maybe not. They have a 20 point lead at halftime. What in the world? Our, uh, our MVP big men and uh, the point guard Chris Paul just got blown TF out. Uh, yeah, I did not see that coming. The 2014 draft class does not live on, but Nikola Jokic will. Oh, and that's a big old chunk of landmass for Dame Portland and the 2012 draft class. We got another team playing in their second game as the wheel gave us 1985. They were looking to expand into 2016 territory. 2016 was pretty low on that list of rankings uh, that I used and their roster, not that great, but uh, I guess it's balanced with current day studs. And you know what? Credit to them. They're keeping it close with this loaded 85 draft class. Who's gonna pull away? Yeah, not a clutch finish, but 2016 was good. It was only a matter of time before we got another legendary draft class, 2003 making their debut, but going into uh, 1993, they've already won a game. And just like 1996, 2003 speaks for itself. LeBron, Wade, Anthony, Bosch, yo, low key on paper in this specific situation. This isn't the best draft class, but with 99 LeBron and a bunch of other dudes, I do like their chances. 1993, they've already won a game, but they're there for it. They could be beaten here. And maybe just maybe I was downplaying the 2003 draft class for no reason, because even against a team that's already won, they came out and simply dominated. Yeah, yeah, that is a large uh, near 30 point victory. How did 1993 beat 1987 earlier? That 87 draft class is loaded. Anyways, we're just going to play a little hot potato here with David Robinson, who now joins the 2003 draft class, which like, honestly, fine by me. I mean, I just want to see it. I want to see teams be great. Oh, 1969. Nice draft class. Let's go. Where are the 69 draft class? Where is that? Uh, oh, that's Kareem and the uh, Milwaukee. Okay. Uh oh, this is taking 1969 right back into 2003 territory, which has uh, all sorts of ramifications. And by that, I mean, 1969 either eliminates 2003 already, or they get to add Kareem. Um, yeah, Kareem's draft class, not very deep. It, it's got some talent in there, some 70s. Uh, yeah, this is going to be all about Kareem though. I really did think this would be a blowout by now. Oh, 2003 is pulling away. I can feel, oh, maybe not. And then again, uh, maybe yes, maybe 2003 would pull away. This game was by no means a blow. Okay, Melo, chill. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar had 35, 19, and six blocks. He was so good. And he's now taking those talents to 2003. Come on, dude. The rest of the map is in like, like serious trust, serious consequential trouble here. Fortunately, we let the 2003 class chill for a bit as we get a weird matchup. 2019 out of New Orleans heading north into 1956 Minneapolis territory. Jaw, Zion, Garland, Poole, a solid roster against Bill Russell, Elgin Baylor, a few OG Celtics, and literally nothing else. No way. The old timers are still in this game into the clutch. They have no bench, no depth. They're absolutely gassed. And Elgin Bay, what a legend. Holy moly. Elgin going to work again. They have to bring the double. In. Yo, Gatorade, it doesn't matter. Elgin is too good. He can't be stopped. Do the old men from 1956 have one stop left in them to win this game? RJ Barrett pulling up. Nah, RJ, get back to Canada, bruh. Draft class full of freaks. Couldn't handle a five-man rotation of old man strength. I uh, I gave him Jaw Wick as a reward. We got another modern class in 2017, taking on the ever-expanding 1985 class. Yeah, no shot Tatum and the boys were uh, hanging with the OGs. Nah. 1985 would add Tatum, and they're plotting to ruin either 2003 or 1996 in due time. We'd finally get back out west with 2008 heading cross-country to take on 2012. Prime Russell Westbrook, Prime D. Rose, Kevin Love, Ibaka, Deont. Yo, this 2008 roster kind of means business. And I'm talking profitable business. They simply dominated. Wow. Like David Robinson, Nikola Jokic getting that hot potato treatment this video. And after that flurry of games, we are at the halfway point. And what a perfect point to introduce our other uh, heavyweight vaunted draft 
draft class. I'm pretty sure 03, 96, and 84 are regarded as the best three draft classes ever. And perfect. We're getting a couple first timers. 84 versus 2011. Very interesting. At the risk of underestimating another powerhouse, the 1984 draft class led by Mike Hakeem, John Stockton, Charles Barkley, obviously super top heavy. They aren't as balanced and deep as some other teams, but they're amazing. Well, 2011, um, they're a sneaky contender here. Super tough first matchup, but Kawhi, Kyrie, Jimmy Buckets. I mean, they've got a roster. Uh-oh, 1984 could be in some trouble. Dude, 96 and 031, 1984, you better pick it up. Okay, okay, 1984 did pick it up, but this game isn't over. You know, 2011 needs a small miracle, but you really never know what could happen. Uh, why is Kemba out there instead of Kyrie? Dude, coaches be doing too much. Actually, that was a nice pass. Good coaching decision, I guess. Hakeem working inside again on Jonas Valanciunas. This is a bit unfair. Uh, J Jonas did all he could, but Hakeem with the dagger. I'm not gonna lie, Kawhi Leonard born and bred to be added to this 1984 lineup. Like, it's perfect. And usually I'm all for upsets in this video, but I kind of love that 1984, 2003, 1996. They are all getting better. They're all advancing. It's gonna be epic. We'd stay in Texas with 2018 coming up and they take on the 1984 draft class in their back-to-back -back matchup. This could get interesting. Once again, this is a super pivotal matchup because either this 2018 team, very capable, could upset MJ in the 84 draft class or Luka Doncic could be added, the final infinity stone for that team. The opportunity for chaos was so tangible and both these teams came out and played up to their potential. They were balling. Neither team could get a stop and it's a one point game with under two minutes left. MJ and the 84 draft class do have a lead, but Luka and the 2018 team are right there. Luka pulling up. That was a bit of a four shot, but okay. I don't see John Stockton out there or Kawhi, but Hakeem is there with MJ and maybe that's all they need. Shot clock is winding down. Luka coming off a screen. Oh, you could have shot that. Instead, you're going to go one on one. You could have gone right past Mike. What are you doing, Luka? 2018 has been given a lifeline. Uh, lifeline. Luka going in for the lay. Okay. We're going to have more fouls and free throws. Maybe more chaos still to come. 2018 took their final timeout, so this is probably their last possession. They need a three. Luka in the corner. He's shooting over MJ and he's missing a bit anticlimactic, but that'll be game. Luka did his thing 39, 8, and 12 now. He will in fact be taking his talents to 1984. Yo, this is the infinity gauntlet. Wow. This is honestly insane, unprecedented for these imperialism videos. All my favorites heading into this video have won and are just getting stronger. Just 12 teams remained and the wheel continued to ignore the West Coast of America, giving us 1992, which is the debut of Shaq's draft class. A pretty good base squad with prime Shaq, Alonzo Mourning, Jim Jackson, Tom Googs, but come on, dude. They're taking on 1996, which as I've outlined is an impressive team to say the least with a chance to get better. Okay. All right. All right. We, we, we might have an actual upset here. Look at 1992 putting it work. Oh my gosh. Kobe 96 AI. Where you at, bro? Dude, they, they are nowhere to be found. They are going to take an L. The first massive upset of the video. Video. Look at Shaq. I'm sure he did that all game. No way. A 10 point win. Kobe's 96 crew uh, didn't shoot well from three. Wow. Shaq's magic had so many free throws and Shaq wasn't even that dominant. Well, I mean, that's a pretty good stat line, but like I've seen more destructive. What? I can't believe it. Kobe and Shaq reunited now on the 1992 draft class. And in my opinion, the greatest draft class in NBA history has fallen. Unpredictability strikes again. 1992 was right back up. Thanks to the wheel. They were heading Northwest, which I took to mean into Illinois, which is 2008 draft classes territory. Do Kobe and Shaq have enough magic to take down this stack 2018 with Nikola Jokic? Well, they're starting the game with about a 20 point lead. Are you serious? I mean, 08 made it like interesting 15 points. That's not it. That, that's respectable, but like you still got blown out. And there's Shaq. Yep. 34, 13. Kobe didn't even have to do anything. The big fella carrying. This Kobe Shaq duo really needed a point guard. Let's give him prime D Rose. And now they're a trio. And truly from out of nowhere, Shaq's 1992 draft class now owns territory spanning from coast to coast. Like, wow. We're down to just 10 draft classes left on our wheel. Does 92 continue to just dominate? Okay, 09. We haven't seen them yet. That is excellent. They've got a good shot at facing either 84 or 92. Never mind. They're going to face neither. Oh, wait, my bad. Yes, they are. I forgot 1984 took over the Dallas part of Texas. Let's go. 09 is loaded. Steph Curry, who I believe was the third point guard taken in the draft. Crazy. James. James Harden, Blake Griffin, Drew Holiday. Yeah, this team could make some noise here. Although they're probably going to need Steph Curry to go absolutely bonkers for that to happen against MJ's 1984 draft class. But we'll see. When I said uh, we'll see, 
Nah, man. Uh, yeah, we'll see a near 30 point blowout for the heavyweight favorite. Darn it, Steph. I was hoping y'all boys would just step up, do something crazy. But alas, MJ slash Luca slash Hakeem's 1984 draft class, they very good. And not that they needed it, but now the 84 draft class has added Steph Curry, dude. I'm now officially doubtful that even LeBron's 03 draft class can hang with these boys. Finally, the wheel would show some love to the West Coast, giving us 1979, sending them into 1999 territory. Two of the three first time draft classes we have left on our map, 1979 Magic Johnson, Sidney Moncrief, a bunch of big men, and uh, yeah, not that deep. While 1999 headlined by Sean Marion, Baron Davis, Elton Brand uh, is very deep, but lacks that top end talent. Very interesting matchup. Wow, and barring a miracle here, looks like top end talent once again is gonna win out. I have no clue what Magic stat line is here, but I can only assume he has dominated this game. He doesn't have much of a supporting cast, but that's been, oh, that was beautiful, and that's probably the dagger. Indeed, it was the dagger. Neither team shot well in this game, but Magic 79 draft class, just better overall. Wow, and he didn't, I mean, 19, 9, and 10 is pretty impressive, but he didn't dominate the way I thought he might. Sidney Moncrief was awesome. It's probably too little too late for Magic 79 draft class, but adding Sean Marion is at least a start, but I think they're gonna have a bit too much ground to make up here down the stretch. It had been a minute, but we finally got to see our old men 1956 draft class back in action. They're heading to Illinois, which is now 1992 territory. 1956 literally has six players in their rotation, but when two of them are Elgin Baylor and Bill Russell, does it really matter? I mean, I'm saying we kind of got a battle here. I, I can't believe it. No way. This is nuts. This is not. What am I saying? They have six players in their rotation. The rest are 50, oh, literally 50 over. Oh my gosh. I, how does a team with Kobe, D Roche, how did they lose? This, you know what? We're just going to roll with it and I'm going to stop asking questions. 1956 draft class coming for the dub. Every single time I think I have this game figured out without fail, it shocks me. Kobe joins the 1956. Look at this. They are now seven people deep. The rest are, I told you, 50 overall. Anyways, all this territory previously owned by 1992 now belongs to Elgin and 1956. Sure, makes sense. The world's greatest seven man rotation would have a chance to prove themselves again as 1985 was heading into part of their territory. I'm just saying this might officially be my breaking point, dude. 1985, so good. They've stacked up so many upgrades. They have top and talent. They are deep. And 1956 is just, I, I'm going to stop talking about it, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally, I can stop talking about it. Looks, oh, there's a little bit of a comeback. Is this not a blowout? Oh, okay, 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 okay. 1956 kept threatening. It, it, they just kept this game close enough that I had some question marks, but uh, my boys from 1985 pulled through. That is an emphatic W. Good showing from Kobe, Elgin, Bill Russell. I mean, they made a run, dude. Kobe is now the officially licensed top potato of this video as he joins 1985. They are loaded. And once again, this ginormous chunk of land spanning coast to coast switches hands. This time it's uh, New York Knicks orange. And now just six teams remain on our wheel. As per usual, there's one team that has slid all the way by without having to play a game. Maybe not again. Yeah, actually, I don't think there's any possible way for the compass to send them into action here. I'm of course talking about KD's 07 draft class up there in Seattle, but they are being blocked by that New York Knicks orange. A refresher on Rick Barry's 1965 draft class. They beat Oscar Robertson and added him. Billy Cunningham is there. Gail Goodrich. In terms of OG teams, this is a pretty good one. And in this case, OG means old guy. So yeah, they are super OGs. 1985 now is Kobe wearing number two running point. Will it work? Yep. Yep. It, it would. Um, yeah. Our OGs uh, not given much of a fight. Well, hold on. Whoa. Whoa. They, well, hold on. They made this again. No way. Yeah. Keep this single digits clutch finish. Let's go. I'll be honest. I'm just thirsty for a clutch finish here. Seven points is a pretty good lead for 1985, but you never know. If 1965 can string together a couple stops and scores, we've got a clutch finish. Good defense, Rick Barry. Yes. Oh, wait. Another great find from fine from Oscar. I can speak. He's dropping dimes. 1965. Y'all got one more stop in you just to make this interesting. Oh, they're bringing a double. That is interesting. Vince is open underneath though. Uh, it was a bold strategy, but yeah, it didn't work. Is there anybody out here who can stop this orange invasion of our map? Well, our next team up to try might just be equipped enough to do that. 2003, heading into that orange territory, baby. Just a reminder on 03, one of the best base squads on this roster. Plus, they added Kareem after their one victory. Oh, wait, and David Robinson. They've won twice. I forgot. I still don't know if that's going to be enough. Wait, Kirk Heinrich is starting for 2003. I'm not so sure about that, but uh, will it matter? For a few moments to begin this game, it looked like nothing would matter as 1985 was blowing out 2003, but the tide eventually shifted. 2003 came all the way back and they are here 
brother. They're down only four, just over two minutes left. We got to finish. Two minutes is plenty of time, but now down six, like this 2003, they can't have empty possessions here. That is a mismatch. David Robinson over Kobe. Easy work. Actually, wait, no. Uh, why do the 2003 Cavs not have Kareem out there? It's so dumb, but D-Rob's going to get a bucket. It was ugly, but it worked. If they lose, I'm not going to be able to forget that. Patrick Ewing contested. That's a clutch Who? D-Rob post fade over Ewing. Ah, I don't love that shot, dude. 2003 had a coaching disaster class, in my opinion, but also they shot 24% from three. So ladies and gentlemen, I fear it's Jover as LeBron has now joined the 1985 draft class, which is just, you know, an all-time all-star team at this point. And I really think we're looking at the 1984 draft class that could beat them and probably, yeah, that's probably it. And with four teams left, do we get that heavyweight tilt to potentially determine the board right now? Yeah, okay, well, we get 1984. I'm not sure if there's a direction that would avoid that matchup here. Wait a minute. Southwest. Okay. Okay. Well, that does avoid the 1985 draft class getting a sixth win in a row or whatever. 1984 versus 1979. Actually, this is perfect because we're either going to have Magic in the 1979 draft class become the team of destiny or Magic probably joins the 1984 team. That, that would help. Yeah. Yeah. And this is kind of where I thought it was going to go. Magic, do you have any literal Magic here? No. Oh, okay. He didn't. He didn't. He might have had a good game, but that's a near 30 point win for 1984. It was predictable in 1979. They just don't have enough upgrades to compete, but it's cool. Look at Magic, dude. 21, 11, and 11. He's always going to get his numbers, but I say it's cool because Magic's 1979 class had to be sacrificed in order for him to join the 1984 draft class, giving us a legit foe for 1985. That was a lot of numbers. That was confusing, but I know y'all are following. And now there'll be just one thing standing in the way of a potential 84 versus 85 clash in the finals. Yeah, I'm talking about you, KD. Can you please get your boys involved in this video? Bro, I don't even know what to say. Like, we have to see KD's 2000. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I don't even know why I'm so excited. Like, they're just going to get blown out, but I didn't want them to just walk to the finals and get blown out, I guess. Yes, yes. I'm pretty sure this is a foregone conclusion, but I'd rather KD play in this game than our final, you know. Of course, there's a chance KD and his boys could pull off one of the most funny things I've ever seen in one of these videos. Upset it. Man, they got all centers on this. There's no... They're going to lose by 50. Oh, no, you don't, 2K. No, you don't. This is not a close game. I will not have it. You know, I, I can't lie. This game is surprising close. KD's team is not losing by 50. I mean, they're losing by like 30, but that's not 50. And shout out to 2007 draft class KD, 35, 5, and 7. He tried to do it on his own, but uh, in classic KD fashion, he will be joining an already formed, nearly indestructible super team. Yep, there you go, KD. As predicted, there were no shenanigans in that game. Goodbye, Kevin Durant in 2007. And hello to the only remaining matchup possible, 1984 versus 1985. Yep, they were on a crash course. The 1984 is widely regarded as the greatest draft class of all time, and their roster to start this video reflected it. They've won only four games, but have added Magic, Luka, Steph, Kawhi in the process, and they are now here. While the 1985 draft class was not the greatest team on paper, but they've won seven total games, allowing them to add, yes, just an unmitigated, unstoppable super team around Patrick Ewing. 25 draft classes have already fallen to our left standing in their wake, but only one can be the true champion. Let's go. And you know what? I can feel this game becoming a clutch, intense finish. So let's watch this together. 1984 out to the early lead in the first half. 1985 has slowly turned that around. This is a high scoring game. 1984 is led basically wire to wire right now. Oh, but it's tight. It is tight. We're going to have a clutch finish, aren't we? Yes, sir. 121, all five minutes left. I let it sim out a tiny bit further. 1985 now a one point lead with two and a half minutes left. Who is going to hit a shot, make the correct play on the offensive end in the clutch. Steph, nope, he's not shooting it. MJ, you know he is from mid-range. That's why he's the GOAT, baby. I can't believe Ewing just choked like that in the clutch. Okay, okay. Does 1984 have an answer? A potential dagger? Magic trying to find MJ. That was so predictable, dude. A huge steal for KD playing in just his second game this video. Oscar Robertson now blowing past Steph. A liability on defense. That's crazy. My body is ready for a game winner, baby. Steph, trying to get it back going at oscar and draws free throws i called out steph's defense but he made up for it in the clutch with a couple huge free throws and the onus is back on 1985 still no lebron out there they have kobe they have durant big o loves to shoot five seconds left they're going to ewing for the game over hakeem wow no <laughs> 
No timeouts for 84, and MJ nearly made it. What a game, man. A finish like I've never seen. Crazy game winner. Ewing over Hakeem. Then Michael Jordan literally almost hit a full court shot. That would have been nuts. These teams were so evenly matched. 1985 hit more threes. 1984 got to the line more. Charles Barkley led 1984 in scoring. Michael Jordan hit a big shot in the clutch, but wasn't that great? While Kobe, Big O, LeBron all performed admirably, and Patrick Ewing in the clutch. It was his team, baby. Even though the 1985 draft class dominated this entire video, that still felt like an epic finish, an epic upset. Maybe just because it was a game winner, but honestly, you love to see it. What a video, man. I hope you enjoyed that entire video, but especially that clutch finish. Click on this video right here to see me create an all-time team using a method called Sticker Twist. It's new. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, go watch it.